After months of standoffs and tense negotiations between Russia and Ukraine, Moscow has launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine with nearly 200,000 troops, triggering the largest war in European history since the end of World War II. This act of aggression and violation of Ukraine's sovereignty has outraged many nations in the West, with countries like the United States and its NATO allies vowing to impose crippling sanctions on Russia. Now, Russia and Ukraine have had a complex relationship to say the least. Today, Ukraine is an independent nation of over 40 million, but for centuries, this area belonged to the Russian Empire. Yet, following the disintegration of the empire at the end of World War I, many ethnic minorities broke free and formed their own independent states, and the Ukraine tried to do the same. But it was eventually defeated by the communists and absorbed into the Soviet Union who set up the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic in 1922. Now, following World War II, a 10-year-long anti-Soviet insurgency in the Ukraine was finally suppressed by the communists, and Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev transferred the Crimean Peninsula from Russia to the Ukrainian SSR. But once the Soviet Union collapsed, the now independent Ukraine inherited the borders of the old Ukrainian SSR. In the years after Ukraine's independence, relations between the two countries swung back and forth as Ukraine was split over whether to join the EU and NATO or to align itself with Russia. And this split had geographic implications, as the Ukrainian regions with the largest Russian minority in the south and east wished for the country to have closer ties with Russia, while the northern and western parts of the country sought closer relations with the European Union. In 2013, a trade war broke out between Ukraine and Russia, as Ukraine pursued a trade deal with the EU. Later that year, one of Putin's top advisors hinted at the possibility of separatist movements springing up in the Russian-speaking east and south of the country if Ukraine continued to align itself with the West. And in November of 2013, Ukraine's pro-Russian president suspended negotiations with the EU in order to seek closer economic relations with Russia. The signing of this treaty triggered a revolution as mass protests in Kiev toppled Ukraine's pro-Russian government. Almost immediately, civil war erupted in the country as Russian-backed separatists took control of much of the Donbas, while Russia itself invaded and annexed the Crimean Peninsula. So, where does that leave us today? Well, from Putin's perspective, this is a case of Russia attempting to reassert itself as a great power by conquering or subjugating a country which Putin himself refuses to recognize as an independent state. From Ukraine's perspective, this is yet another attempt by Russia to assert its influence over a region that historically it has brutally repressed, starved, and murdered into submission. And from the West point of view, this is a question of what happens next. With the Russians currently showing no signs of backing down, many Western countries are now sending volunteers and supplies to help the Ukrainians resist the Russian invasion. Ultimately, the Russo-Ukrainian war has demonstrated to the world just how fragile peace can be as politicians fight to control the destinies of people who find themselves having very little say in the decisions affecting their lives. I'm Nick Freitas with Y Minutes, and thank you for watching.